Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and today we're going to look at what is coming in update 8.2 which is literally around the corner and it's already caused quite a bit of a stir to say the least. Why is this? I hear you ask. Well, mainly it's because of the balance adjustments that are being applied to many of the Tier X tanks. Adjustments that I personally think are warranted and actually needed. In this video, we will look at each balance adjustment and we'll try to understand why they are now being implemented. However, before we go into too much detail, I would point out there is a lot of these adjustments required due to Wargaming implementing the Super Duper Consumable, which acted like a patch buff to certain tanks, and patch buffs that I don't think were necessary. Well, not really. The whole idea behind the Super Duper Consumable was conceived because players were either struggling with or not playing their British tanks, such as the FE215B. A nice heavy, by the way. Wargaming, in their infinite wisdom, therefore introduced this super duper consumable that changed the parameters of the tanks without actually changing the basic specs. This consumable had the effect of turning what was meant to be a heavy tank into a medium tank, what with giving it increased speed, rotation and turning ability. Wargaming then decided to extend this consumable to the American tanks. Why? Who knows? This in turn made some mediums like the M48 pattern obsolete in real terms. I mean, why on earth would you get a pattern when you can roll out in the E5? Have the super duper consumable to make the speed better than the pattern whilst having more HP, better armor, better penetration and better damage. Okay, the pattern has better DPM, a faster reload and, a, and is quicker by five kilometers an hour average speed. But drop that super duper consumable and the E5 will outpace the pattern with ease. Therefore making it, well, obsolete really. You've got a heavy that will now be a medium. Wargaming therefore had to find a way to reduce the impact of the super duper consumables without actually removing it. So they came up with a two part solution. Nerf the super duper consumable and nerf the actual tank. So let's have a look at some of those nerfs. First off, we've got the T110E5, better known as just the E5. Now, the E5 will get a nerf in 8.2, but it's not a massive nerf, so don't worry. The reload time will be increased from 10 seconds to 11 seconds, something that is actually needed. I personally, myself, do not run an adrenaline consumable on the E5, because the reload for a heavy is already pretty sufficient not to warrant one. Well, it's just my opinion. This therefore allows me to run repair kits, two of them, because hey, the E5 gets tracked a lot, and the super duper consumable. Now with the reload being increased by one second, I, and no doubt many others, will need to decide what consumables the E5 will now run. The turret traverse speed has also been decreased from 20 to 16 degrees. Now most players aren't gonna feel that, to be honest, but the pros certainly will as the E5 is a staple on the tour scene and for good reason. And no, not just because of its insane ability to be ammo racked. We then turn to the 215B, which like the E5 has such a good reload time, there's actually no need to have the adrenaline consumable. thus allowing you to use the super duper booster and maybe reactive armor. In fairness, the 215B is pretty robust enough not to warrant two repair kits. So increasing the reload time from 8.7 seconds to 9.77 is pretty fair, I think. Okay, many will argue that the 215's B reload is one of its defining features, but the tank will still have the quicker reload of any tier 10 heavy, and it will still have a rock solid turret. We then come on to the moose, or okay, the mouse, everybody knows it's a mouse. Now when the heavies got the HP buff, the mouse benefited the most, it got its HP increase to 3000, which is huge. And if you are clever, you would have realized that the equipment to enhance the armor by 4% is pretty bloody useless, and you would sport the improved assembly that increases the hit points by 6%, giving an already meaty HP tank an additional 180 hit points. Now I said at the time that this was a mistake, and Wargaming have finally realized that, 
and they will now nerf the mouse's HP from 3000 to that of 2850. However, you should still be running the improved assembly. This will still give you an additional 171 hit points, giving the mouse 3021 HP instead of 3180, which is still a considerable amount of HP, to be fair. Wargaming will also increase the dispersion, again something I feel is necessary on this tank. The mouse is not meant to have a good gun, it's a bully and it's meant to be used for close quarters fighting, hence why it's got poor DPM etc. It's not meant to snipe, so increasing this dispersion and giving it better, you know, even worse gun handling is no big deal in real terms. We now move on to the IS-4. The IS-4 doesn't have a super duper consumable but it's probably one of the most noob friendly and robust tier 10 heavies in reality. It is a staple on the tour scene and for good reason. It has pretty good DPM, good armor and a pretty decent mobility for a heavy. Wargaming have therefore decided to decrease its standard HP from, uh, from 2650, which again, like the mouse, this tank doesn't need that 4% to strengthen the armor. So most of you should be running the improved assembly, giving the IS-4 2,809 HP. Now, however, it will get 2,500 standard. And if you use the improved assembly, which you should be, it will bring you back to 2,650. Again, like the E5, the traverse speed has also been decreased from 17 to 14 degrees. But again, most of us won't feel this However, the pros certainly will. We then move to the Crown Wagon, another tank that is rock solid and pretty much a staple nowadays in the Tor meta. And this one also doesn't require that 4% strengthening into the armor because the turret is absolutely rock solid. Now it currently has 2,500 HP, which when you put the improved assembly equipment on, it makes it 2,650. That will now be reduced and nerfed to 2,300, which with the equipment will now give you 2,438. Again, like the IS-1 E5, the traverse speed will also be decreased from 28 to 16 degrees. Again, something that most of us won't really feel, to be honest. That's almost finished the nerfs, but we've got the T. Um, 110 E3 and the E4 to deal with. Now both these American TDs will get some adjustments, especially on the turret and in particular the Commander's Cupola. Now anyone who's faced these TDs will know how difficult it is to actually hit them frontally, so Wargaming have focused on that. Let's have a look at the E3. Now this will have the Cupola balanced on its rear and on its sides. They will be decreased from 229mm to 152 millimeters along with the lower part frontally. The upper part frontally will be increased slightly to 51 millimeters and it'll also get a 210 millimeter thick screen which is a slight buff. Turning to the E4, well this one's a little bit different. This one benefits rather than suffers. It will have buffs rather than nerfs. The turret cheeks being increased from 203 millimeters to 230 millimeters the side armor of the cupola increased from 76 mil to 152 mil. It will also have its turret traverse speed increase, something it really did need, from 16 to 20 degrees, although it will get a slight nerf on the dispersion on that turret traverse. Leaving all the nerfs to one side, we now have a look at the buffs. Sorry, yeah, the buffs. The E50M is the first on the list. This one gets a buff, quite a significant one, I feel. Now the E50M is a great medium tank, in fact it's one of the best I think, but it's going to get a bit of a buff. I mean it's got solid turret armor and a good reload, and that is what Wargaming are looking at, the reload. The E50M will therefore get a reload buff, making its reload 7.5 seconds rather than 7.8 seconds. Okay, it's only 0.3 seconds, but trust me on this, that's quite a lot for this tank. It will also get a buff on its mobility, with its ground crossing ability increased. This again ain't going to affect most players, but the pros and the super duper unicorns will certainly see that difference. Staying with mediums, we now look at the M48 pattern and the M60. Both tanks are pretty much the same, and both of these tanks will get decent buffs, and required buffs at that. 
They will both have their reload times reduced from 7.78 seconds to that of 7.1 seconds, which is quite significant and sorely needed. Aside from that, they will also have their APCR, which is their standard ammunition, penetration increased from 250mm to 255mm. Again, a buff these tanks definitely needed. We then move to the FV4202, the poor British medium light, which isn't medium med, sorry, which isn't the easiest tank to play for most players. And it will get a buff on its speed. It will increase its speed from 50 kilometers an hour to 60. This will bring it some much needed mobility because it does suffer some bot in that respect. As a side note, the tier nine British medium, the Sent 71, also gets a buff because the 4202 gets one and its speed will go from 40 to 50 kilometers. That's the mediums dealt with. We're now just gonna look at the tail end, which are the TDs and there are only three of them. First off, we've got the Object 263. I feel sorry for the poor old 263. It's probably one of the trickiest TDs to play, and it's certainly not one of the preferred tanks. I mean, if you've got Russian TDs, you're gonna roll out on the 268 any time of the day, moreover than the 263. And this will now get some well-deserved attention. It will have its standard HP increase from 1,750 to 1,850. And its armor around the gun mantle, it will be increased from 0 to 80 to 70 stroke 150. The armor um, hull sides will also be increased from 80 to 100 millimeters. It's had its mobility tinkered with, with the traverse speed increased from 30 to 38 degrees. And it will have its dispersion increased from 0 0.32 to 0 0.39. Now, Wargaming will want to turn this into an assault tank. Um, with these balance adjustments, it may finally happen. Next on the list is the WZ113 GFT, one of the worst TDs in tier 10. I mean, and this tank finally gets something that may change that. Now the armor between the cabin and the gun mantle it will get a screen of 100 millimeters thickness, which is probably well deserved. The cheeks on the sides of the cabin will also be increased from 120 stroke 80 to 170 stroke 100 millimeters, giving it a little bit more thickness. Mobility is also going to be looked at. It will get an engine increase from 70, 750 horsepower to 800 horsepower, giving it that little bit more of a boost. And the travel speed increases from 27 degrees to 33 degrees, but the dispersion on the whole traverse will be decreased slightly. Finally, we have the FV4005. Now this tank gets a buff, but for the life of me, I don't understand why really. The buff it gets is to the magazine reload, making it 19 seconds rather than the current 20 seconds. Okay, it's only one second, but this tank packs quite a punch already. And with the reload now being buffed, increasing its DPM somewhat, it will be quite a formidable tank, more formidable than it currently is. Yes, I know and I understand that many struggle in this tank, but I also know that many people ardently argue it's an easy 4K damage tank. Maybe more people will now play this tank, which is probably what Wargaming are looking for, but only time will tell. Those are all the balance adjustments that will come in the next update. And in many respects, I totally agree with what Wargaming are doing here. Although I would prefer that the super duper consumable be removed, which would actually remove some of the issues that we now face. Wargamer, however, will never ever do that, so balance adjustments like this will be required. Not only that, but Wargaming periodically tinker with the Tor tanks in order to change the Tor meta, which is never a bad thing. On a side note, going back to the super duper consumable, this will get a nerf, which I feel is badly required, and it won't be as effective going forward as it currently is. Obviously, removing the damn thing would be a lot better, but hey, it's here to stay, so we have to deal with it. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been an overview of the balance adjustments that are going to come at 8.2, which is literally around the corner, i.e. it will hit tomorrow. So guys, let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments below. Sorry it's been quite a lengthy video, but there's quite a lot to get through. Anyway, guys, until the next, next time, Stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield and a happy tanking, because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.